All right. So, hi. Um, my name is Audra Lindsay, and I'm going to talk a little bit tonight about how to build real networks that scale. Um, just to start off a little bit about me, I, uh, I've been working professionally building communities, content, websites, everything uh, for over 15 years, primarily working with startups and nonprofits um, on everything from marketing to SEO, email campaigns, um, social media, building communities, blogging, kind of everything, even product. So I'm really, really passionate about helping people do things better, faster, and more efficiently through my work. But I also, um, I've been just putzing around online for a really long time. I joined my first online forum in 1995, and it was a way for me to talk to other musical theater geeks. So um, I'm sure we all have a lot of that in common, and we can talk about that afterwards as well, and we can share our geeky stories. And a little bit about Mighty Bell, which is the company that I'm with right now. I've been at Mighty Bell for uh, almost four years, and um, my job primarily is to work with some of our biggest customers and partners on launching um, new dedicated networks where people can come together around a specific identity or an interest. Uh, and in our networks, members are inst instantly introduced to each other. Um, or sorry, they're in instantly introduced to others who are like them, people who are near them, and people who care about the same topics. Uh, some of the companies and individuals I've worked with include uh, the Gates Foundation, Intuit QuickBooks, Gretchen Rubin, Lean In, um, McGraw Hill, American Express, a lot, of, a lot of folks doing a lot of different cool things. Um, and also, our, uh, our company was founded by Gina Bianchini. She was the founder of Ning, if any of you remember Ning, uh, back in the day. So, oh, all good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and so over the last five years, Gina and our team has been really focused on building mobile networks that scale. And I wanted to take a step back before we talk about building networks and just talk about like what is going on right now in social media. Um, I don't know how many of you have talked to somebody in the last week or three weeks who's just been completely overwhelmed and they're literally paralyzed every time they open up their Facebook feed or their Twitter feed. Um, and at some point I'm realizing that our feeds became more about surfacing polarizing posts about politics and less about having meaningful conversations with each other. Um, social networks, they started out as a place where we could keep track of what our friends and family were doing, but now they've morphed into a place where just way too many things are happening constantly. There's just information overload. Um, I'd love to kind of talk about that a little bit more with all of you one-on-one -on -one to see how you're feeling about that. Um, so how did we get here? Um, we traded social networks for social media. And in my personal opinion, social media is really built on a 20th century model where I talk out to you and you listen back or you follow me. So we're building audiences, we're aggregating audiences, but we're not really talking to each other anymore. And when there are less opportunities to connect with the people that we should know versus the people we already do know, there are less opportunities for personal growth and for creating real change in our communities um, through social networks and through talking to each other online. And so that's why I truly think that dedicated networks are so important, and that's what I'm focused on building. Um, so dedicated networks, they deliver on the promise of meeting other people who care about the same things that you do. Um, in a lot of the networks that I help build at Mighty Bell and in various other places, um, members are actually benefiting from the collective experiences of the group. And as we'll talk about a little bit later, that's less talk, and it actually means more action. So I think this is a huge opportunity for those of us who build communities, who are really passionate about bringing people together. I think this is an opportunity for all of us to really build real and lasting relationships going forward. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit tonight about how to do that effectively and at scale. Cool. OK, so every time I spin up a new network or I talk to somebody who's launching a new community, I start with one question. What will your members do together? This is going to inform everything that you do going forward. Ooh. All right, so um, there you go. So I'm going to kind of run through a few of the mission statements and the uh, sort of primary uh, member motivations behind a lot of the networks that I help run at Mighty Bell. 
Um, the first one here is own it. And you'll see something common through all of these mission statements, and that is they're all answering the question uh, that a prospective member comes in with, which is, what is this? Why should I join? And most importantly, why does this network exist? Why does it have to exist? The most successful networks in my own experience are the ones that have a clear mission, purpose, and a reason to exist. You can't just jump into facilitating conversations and introducing people to each other if they don't really have a clear mission and that's driving your community and why it exists. So in this example, um, own it is a trusted network of small business owners and the self-employed that are supporting each other and growing their businesses. This is a network that I work closely with Intuit QuickBooks to launch. It now has about 150,000 people in it, but we started with just two of us. Um, and we spent a lot of time working on this mission statement. A lot of people had input. We talked a lot about, you know, what do we want people to do together? And the network actually started out as an experiment within Intuit, a very small experiment where they wanted to see what happens when you bring together self-employed professionals and allow them to talk to each other and learn from each other? So we set it up very clearly from the beginning with a strong mission and a strong reason to exist, which is I'm going to join this network so that I can make better, more informed decisions by tapping into the experiences of people who are just like me. And when I join, I have the opportunity to talk about topics that don't have easy or obvious answers. So a lot of the networks that I find are really successful are... Um, Communities where people are talking about things that you can't really Google an answer for. I can't just go to Google and find out how other people are approaching invoicing or how they're dealing with kind of social media conundrums as a small business owner. So um, that's the focus of this network. Um, another one that I run and help advise is called World Language Corner. Very similarly, we identified who this network is for. Rural language teachers who need support and encouragement from each other. Also a common theme, these folks are kind of isolated and they're alone. They need to get support from other people. There's sometimes only one Spanish teacher in an entire school. Um, they don't have people that they can talk to, that they can get resources from, that they can learn from. So here we, we promise the by joining, I have access to the largest knowledge base of practical ideas and resources for world language teachers, and I can connect with thousands of other people who are just like me. And finally, just here's another one. Um, this is a really cool network uh, called Beyond Type One that also uses our platform. And um, they're, they're dedicated to changing what it means to live each day with type one diabetes. Um, they are gathering the largest collection of practical ideas, stories, and resources for those living with and touched by type one diabetes. And the promise there is that I can talk to other people who are just like me and I'm not alone. All right, so you have your foundation. I'm going through my notes here. Um, and once you've laid out your mission, you've stated the benefits and the promise of joining your network, um, that's when you need to think about, okay, how am I going to keep these people engaged from day one? And how are we going to scale that? And I, I know the title of this talk that got tossed around was like six core engagement strategies that scale. So this is the part where I sort of break down some of those for you. Um, a couple, couple notes or caveats. Uh, what we've learned over many, many years of doing this at Mighty Bell is that you have to take a portfolio approach. There is no one-size-fits-all solution. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, there's no magic action you can take that's just going to like do your job for you. We're here to introduce people to each other. That's our job as community managers and community professionals. So um, I'm, I've been really obsessed with figuring out the best ways to do that that are going to scale and help you do your job better so that people are talking to each other, and they're really getting a benefit from joining your community. All right. So the first thing is just to welcome every new member. This sounds so simple and so like obvious, but it's something that we had to learn. Uh, it was just something that we were learning as we were launching some of our early networks that have now gotten really, really big, including Ownit, which was, um, our challenge was, okay, we're building a platform that allows people to talk to each other, but how do we get people to come back that second time? Like, once you get someone to join, how do you get them to come back? So we did this experiment when we were launching the self-employed community very early on where we would personally welcome every new member with, like, a long message. And it was, like, personalized, and it was unique, and we spent time on it, and we had, like, an intern helping us with it, and it was awesome because quickly we learned through the numbers that, well, people were coming back. They were excited to join a place where... There were other people them there that were just like them. Um, 
But the problem is that doesn't scale. We were spending like five hours a day doing this and that's not efficient. So um, because we were lucky, lucky enough to obviously be building our own platform and software that does this, we built in a feature that literally lets you welcome all new members with the click of a button. And it sends them a personalized message and uh, it gives them the opportunity to come back and message with other people, meet other people and contribute. And so um, that was really helpful for us to, to understand and I do recommend that as something that'll really help a community grow and help your members feel welcome. Um, the other thing is to ask great questions. Everything starts with a really, really good question, and that's what's going to break the ice. Because these are people that don't yet know each other very often, and you want to make them feel comfortable and like they're contributing something really, really cool to the community. So um, some of the questions that have been really most effective are very simple. It's like, what's one new thing you're hoping to learn from the community here? Or what is your number one goal for 2017, and how can we help you make that goal a reality? Um, Another good one I like in Own It that I use a lot is, what's one new thing you tried in your business today and did it work? Like, hey, I tried putting a different photo on Instagram and it got twice as many likes. That's awesome. You're sharing that with the collective of the community. Um, this is another thing that we tested out manually a lot and we ended up building it into the product where uh, in a Mighty Bell network, somebody who's hosting it can set up an icebreaker question that every new member is prompted to answer. And it works really well. Uh, the other thing is that you always want to make sure that it's not still about you talking out and them talking back to you. It's about kicking off conversations and empowering your members to do that too. So um, we also built in an option for every member to be able to ask their own questions. And that kind of starts more of those notification loops and it helps members feel really engaged and like they have a voice in the community. Um, and this is one of my favorite engagement strategies. Um, again, it seems very simple, but telling stories about the real people in your community and really showcasing who they are, what they care about, um, what questions they might have, what's their story, what makes them unique. Uh, we started doing this as actually a way just to model the conversations we wanted to have in networks that were early and just starting out and didn't ha have a lot of people in them. And it turns out that showing off the people in your community works really well. Um, you guys know that like, it's so hard to capture people's attention spans right now. Like, you're lucky if you get them for a full minute. We're seeing seven to ten minutes on page or on view on some of these posts because people just love reading stories about other people that are just like them. Um, so we realized quickly, quickly in a lot of our experimentation that that was working, and so that's an engagement strategy that we've kind of pulled into the fold, and it's, it's so important. And we tap into our most active members to tell their stories. We also tap into people that are just have a really unique profession or a unique story to share. And uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Also, it helps, you know, it's fun because you get to get on the phone with your members and interview them and write up stories about them. So it's a great way to um, keep the conversation flowing and show off some of the awesome people in your network. Um, the other thing that works really well as you're continuing to engage people is to use polls as a way to crowdsource answers and practical ideas. So uh, another thing that we built in automatically into our platform was the option to like create polls. And you can see that in a lot of places right now, Facebook groups, Twitter, and all of that. It's the easiest and fastest way for people to engage quickly because they love seeing how they stack up against everybody else. So once you answer the poll, you start to see, oh, wow, wow more people are using Instagram than they thought they, I, they were. I keep referencing these small business community questions because that's where I focus a lot of my time. But um, here's a great question, which is like, uh, how much, how much, or when you invoice a customer um, or a client, what percent do you ask for upfront? That's a question that turned out there were a lot of interesting answers even in the comments because you're, you, you're encouraging people to continue the conversation as well and find out how they stack up. So a lot of people were like, I invoiced nothing, I ended up getting paid nothing at the end of the project. Or I invoiced 100% and almost lost the client. So there's a lot of interesting things that you can um, spur and a lot of cool conversations that you can start just by, just by using polls or other types of questions. Um, of course, multiple choice polls, also super effective. Um, for me, they are actually the fastest way for a new member to engage, even more so than the other poll types of the questions, just because it's the lowest barrier of entry. Give people something easy to do. They're in a room full of people that they've never met. They don't really know these people, so give them opportunities to quickly engage, and then they'll get caught in the loops, which is pretty cool. They'll get really excited about answering more polls or sharing more about their experiences. Um, the other thing I like to do on multiple choice polls is always have an other 
tell us more option is the last is the last kind of option in the in the in the poll choices just because you're immediately getting people to add a comment, which is even more engagement. It really works well, believe it or not. And then uh, my personal favorite are hot cold polls. Um, these are really fun because you can take the temperature on an issue or a hot button topic that um, that your members might really care about. So you're going to learn quickly how people feel about something. Um, this is a pretty good question. You can see um, how do you feel about going into business with friends or family? Huge split on that. The other one that was fun, which you wouldn't think would be very interesting, was um, how do you feel about texting your clients or customers as a small business owner? Like huge divide on that. Half of the people were like, I love it. Texting is the only way I communicate with the people that I, that I do work for. And the other half were like, oh, hell no. Like, please just call me or get on email. Like texting is too personal. You're bothering me too much. So I thought that was really interesting. And then a lot of people came out with, oh, maybe I'll try texting because then I can actually get through to my customer and they'll pay me. <laughs> so really, really fun options there. Um, and then the next um, engagement strategy that is also another favorite of mine, and maybe just because I like writing and I love digging into the data, is that when you're asking all these great questions and putting out polls and you're really getting people to talk and share their experiences and how they use different tools or what they do, um, share that data back. So pull together those insights and um, use that as another conversation starter. So people, you know, they're answering these polls and these questions, they're sharing what they're doing, but they may not have a grasp of what's happening overall across your community. So use that to your advantage and share it back. And these can be, these can be turned into practical guides. They can double as shareable resources that people can share out and, you know, bring more people in. Um, a good example is that, like, we did some surveying and polls we found out, this is crazy, but it was like 60 or 70% of small business owners have no clue if what they're doing on social media is effective at all for growing their business or their customer base. And so we're like, that's crazy. So we shared this back and said, listen, you're all confused. How can we help you? <laughs> and so we continue to ask questions and get them answered um, just to help people understand like how they can do better. And so it's really, really valuable to share those stories back. Use actual quotes that your members are sharing. Tell stories through these posts, but also share data. Oh, and uh, my pro tip on this one is to always close with a question. So nothing I've ever done with an engagement strategy in any community is just like a listicle that someone is supposed to come and read and leave. Give people an opportunity to start a new conversation. So always end with a question. What are you going to do with this data that's going to change how you work or how you approach something or whatever you do tomorrow? Like, what are, what are your plans? How, what did you learn from this? And what are you going to do tomorrow? So always close with a question. It's a great way to continue that engagement. Um, events. Events are awesome. They are the heartbeat of every community. Um, but as we all know, live events are really hard to scale. So they're expensive. They've got a lot of overhead. So I personally love hosting virtual events. That's actually where I do um, most of our events within Mighty Bell Networks. Um, just because they are a simple, easy way for people to come together in real time and get feedback and support from their peers, especially because these are people, again, who don't yet know each other, they have something in common, they have a common identity, uh, they're probably trying to do something, to, you know, in their own lives to get better or to get more business or to, you know, become a better teacher or get more resources. So giving people an opportunity to come together in real time, very, very valuable. It doesn't have to happen in person. Um, we do Q&As. We, we will bring in like a special guest, a top member in the community who may be an expert in a particular topic, and we'll host these monthly Q&As, and they're a lot of fun. And then we can just share back the transcript so everybody can view it later. Um, and the other thing that I, I really recommend is just creating a regular cadence of events. You all know this. You keep coming to these events on like a monthly basis, I believe. Um, very valuable to just have that cadence so people know what to expect. And then bonus, you can, if you can do in-person events, obviously they're awesome. Um, in a lot of networks where people are very distributed or they're virtual, um, it's okay if you can't do that, but at least give them the opportunity to meet the other people who are near them. So another thing that we built into the platform based on this learning, because people said to us, I want to meet people near me, is we made that possible. So um, in every Mighty Bell network, 
I can log in and immediately see all of the people who are near me so then I can message them, I can meet up with them, we can get coffee, we can continue that conversation as well if we want to. Um, and if you do host in-person events, such as this one, um, allow people to participate if they can't be there in person, which is exactly what you guys are doing, which is awesome. So give them an opportunity to chat about it. Give them a thread where they can talk about the topics that are happening uh, in, in, at the in-person event and give them that opportunity to participate. We've actually learned that for many of our networks that have regular conferences or in-person events, uh, the people who are at the event are less active. They're obsessed with like getting that person-to-person -person connection and talking to people. Your community is actually going to be more active online with, with the people who are going to be following along live with you, whether you're having exclusive conversations they can access or you're giving them the opportunity to have a, like a live chat or a Q&A with one of the special guests. It's a great way to keep, keep people engaged if they can't be there in person. All right, so, <laughs> okay. Uh, so I just wanted to touch a little bit on metrics. Um, there are a lot of numbers that get thrown around at startups, like growth, retention, overall registered users, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what we've learned are that there's really two numbers that we're focused on. And these are the numbers that we look at very closely to understand the health of our communities and if they're growing and if they're active and that people are, if they're working essentially, right? If people are getting value out of this, you're gonna see it in your monthly active members and you're gonna see it in your month over month active member growth. And the leading indicators of monthly active member growth are the percent of active members who contribute. So somebody who comes in and views something, who signs in again, that's great. But we really want people to contribute. That's what we're focused on, is facilitating those conversations between people. So we're looking very closely at people who also contribute. They can answer a poll. They can add a comment. They can create their own post. They can host their own event. Um, all of that indicates value. It's working, right? Um, the other thing is that we're um, obsessed with looking at the number of our people who are on our native mobile apps, and I'll kind of get to that in a second. Um, just because we've learned that that is, ex that is where the most engagement is happening. Big news, people are not using web forums anymore as much as they used to. They're not sitting on a desktop, unfortunately, and talking to people that they don't yet know. Um, which goes hand in hand with push notifications. So, it's great if somebody has joined, if they're participating, but they're not gonna come back unless they know about it, unless they know about new things that are happening. If they know about relevant things that are happening that, that are basically things that they should know about based on where they live, based on their interests, or based on who they are and their identity. Um, and obviously none of this is a perfect science, as I mentioned. You're gonna have to experiment, learn, repeat, listen to your people. Um, Obviously use data to make smarter decisions. I'm deep in our analytics every day, looking at, okay, what is what, what, what content is most popular? What are the topics that people are talking about? If literally no one in a community wants to talk about a particular topic that I've tried to start the conversation on over and over again, we're not gonna talk about that anymore. We're gonna talk about something fun and we're gonna turn it into something that they're really excited about. Um, I also look at data to figure out when I notify people, um, how I notify people, all of that goes into it. Um, an example of something that we learned, as I mentioned on mobile, we, we saw uh, several months ago, more than that now, I guess, that uh, there was five to 10 times the engagement on our mobile apps compared to the web. Uh, so we shifted our focus to onboarding all new members into mobile apps. If they were joining a community that happens to exist in our platform, we're gonna make sure that they're downloading the app and that they're part of that experience in those push notification loops from day one because that's what's working. And this is just a little uh, dashboard, a glimpse. This is like a 10th of our dashboard in a Mighty Bell network. Um, so you can see here I have like a heat map of when I can see when members are online and I can roll over that, I can see growth. We're, we also built into our dashboard things like post activity, I can see what people are interacting with. I can see who is interacting with things. I can see member activity, so I can quickly filter through my top members. I can see who's messaging uh, and who's coming back regularly. So all of that is, um, this is kind of a, a glance into that. Okay, so um, you'll forgive me. I've been re-watching a lot of the West Wing and listening to the West Wing weekly podcast, so what's next? Um, so I, I know I started out by being like, oh my God, social media is so broken right now. Um, but we're really optimistic about the future of Mighty Bell, actually. 
actually. And we think that change is going to happen organically. It's going to happen from the ground up. And it's going to happen in these dedicated networks that are on mobile, where people can meet others who are like them, who are near them, and who care about the same things. That's really, really what it's all about. Um, and I'll, 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 have a, I'll share a little anecdote in one of our networks that I love, which is in uh, Beyond Type 1, the network for uh, folks who have or uh, know someone with B uh, type 1 diabetes. Um, the network started just originally as a place to get support, you know, talk about issues, share information, encourage each other. It's, it's really like this beautiful support network that's just blossomed. And, uh, but at one, at one point, uh, a few months ago, one of the members of the community was denied coverage from their insurance carrier. And the community just rallied to her defense. It was amazing. They all took action. And within, within days, uh, the insurance company changed its course. And that's just one example of how people in a lot of the networks I look at and work with every day are coming together and creating real change and doing really, really interesting things where it's not just talking about something, they're actually taking action. And this is happening because they're in these dedicated spaces where they're able to talk to each other, meet each other, and learn from each other. And the action that's going to happen in your communities or whatever you're doing, it's going to happen with the engagement strategies that you put out there, the way that you kick off conversations, and um, how you encourage people to connect around the things that they really, really care about. And so that's the gist of it. And thank you for listening to me. <laughs> uh, I'm reading a question from the tweet stream. Uh, Mark, who's watching on the live stream, who's not in the room, wants to know, uh, please say more about the programmatic way to welcome people. How is it personalized? How does it not feel robotic? Yeah, um, great question, actually. The magic button that we created that saved my life. Um, so what it does is it, it basically just triggers a notification, either email or push notification if they have the mobile app installed. And it says to them, hey, Audra just welcomed you to your host. Audra, she just welcomed you to the network. Do you want to say hi back? Do you want to you know, kind of learn more about her? So it brings them back to into the app or into the network to message, in many cases they message me, which is awesome, and they're like, is this a real person that just said hi? <laughs> Hello? Like, <laughs> and so there's a little manual work there because I always like follow up and I'm like, hey, yes, it's awesome to have you here, like what can I help you out with? But it's taking away that work, that initial step, and it's, I, I gotta say like, yes, people get a little bit like, you know, is this real or is this a robot? But it feels real for the most part when I get it, and it's really fun to kick up those conversations that way. Yes. Oh, I remember my question. Oh, okay. Okay. So I had a, an interesting experience, and I'd be curious what your thought was if anybody else who does uh, consulting or, or is doing a lot of biz dev and things like that. Um, so I was invited to become part of a group that I frequently find out about job opportunities through today, like today, today, and it's a Yahoo group. Those still exist. Yeah, exactly. So I actually said out loud to the person who recommended me, I don't know if I want to work at a job that's advertised on a Yahoo group. And it actually made me feel like I wouldn't actually even take any of those leads seriously because that's so many, it's like five steps ago, you know? Yeah, well, my question would be like, well, am I going to get notified about things in this group? Like, how am I going to interact with it? Like, I wouldn't even know. Do I have to log in on the web? Like, I don't know. There's a, that's very interesting to hear. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if there was a more of an answer I can give you. It, but it's just it's a mailing list. It's a mailing list. It was a don't mailing list. That's what, oh, about it's, being hosted on Yahoo. Okay. Well, mailing list. It's a mailing list. Still if you exists. don't think email is good enough, <laughs> that's fine. But it's mailing. Okay. Okay. Kind of like Google the groups work. Yeah. Like the first yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. I thought you were going to be like worried because they were hacked recently or something. But <laughs> just a mailing list. You don't even have to be have a Google account or a Yahoo account. All right. Next question. Go ahead. Hi. Yeah, I had a question, sort of related to this about uh, basically using Facebook and Twitter. Uh, uh, start and you know, maintain discussions and also news postings, you know, getting, baiting and users and them, uh, notifying them of the posts there, but having them actually not just like consume it there, but come back, for example, like, you know, discussions, like you say, the example of the group, which I can totally understand, because people, it's like, just start to stay on Facebook, Twitter, we want to actually have it on your mm -hmm. website, and also, I think even bigger, it's using news posts, like, for example, my website, every time I make a cover story, I feel like I need to put it on, you know, make a tweet, but it's like, I feel like that just kind of gets consumed, even if I have a link to my own URL, 
and maybe not have people come back as much. Do you have any like proven tips for using that to get, to get people from there and have to actually come back and engage in your web community? Yeah, so just to be clear, is your question kind of like, how do I get people out in the world who are talking about these things to come into my network or my group where they can go deeper? Is that? That's a, that's a good thing, too. I was actually, I was thinking, Sorry. Like, say if I have like a news uh, article, like I've just crafted up and I post it, or if I want to start like a discussion on a Facebook page, it seems like people would just like and add a comment there, and I kind of like lose them on Facebook and yep. on my website, took them all that you know, massive work for. So mm. and I, I know this is a problem for probably many of your clients and yep. a lot of people. Because I, th I feel like, especially nowadays, whether it's political news or just entertainment news, my, my website is music, it's a website oh, okay. where people just, you know, learn, just get stuff from Facebook and, and maybe yeah. some of their, you know, so many other sources. Yeah, I, no, that's a really tough problem and it's kind of this dispersed thing that's happening and that's a lot of been I, our problem. I mean, when I've worked at startups and nonprofits and you have to track conversations happening across 12 different social platforms, I mean, that's insane, right? So there are decisions and trade-offs you have to make there in, in some senses. Like, I think some of the value you have to offer to people is, you know, you have to join this or you have to come here to get access to all of this awesome stuff I'm doing. Um, you may want to advertise some of it on Facebook. Like we, some of our networks, many of our networks are public, so I can, I can link to an article. We have a beautiful, very medium-like article creator thing within our network, essentially. And I can write up something gorgeous and I can share it on Facebook, but at the end of the day, they're coming back here where I've built notification loops and opportunities for them to meet people that they're not getting on Facebook. So I don't know, it's really tough. And I think you have to decide to draw a line if you're gonna put it everywhere or if you're just gonna put it in one or two places where you, you're, you're asking people to have those meaningful conversations. Because otherwise it's just gonna get lost in the mess, unfortunately. I suppose too, maybe just like if you get the users in the habit of like, I'm sure I, I know I'm doing you know, more frequent updates, I know I should update really every day, but I don't yeah. do it time constraints. It's hard, so maybe, yeah. Maybe if you get users in the habit of that they know there's gonna it's be habit. a change and they'll go to, the, to your website. To exactly, your, you're really building a habit. And through notification, so if, if you're using a place or a platform or whatever it is that lets you notify them every time you add something new, that's doing the work for you so you don't have to post it on 20 different social feeds. Um, where it's going to be gone like that, right? Um, so, yeah, it's just, you know, you have to make decisions about where you want your content to live and how you want people to interact with it. And uh, we use, actually, we use social media a lot to advertise some of our networks and to bring in new people. So these are, I mean, these are people, in many cases, who don't know each other. They're not inviting their friends. Turns out small business owners don't invite their friends in to join them because they don't know a lot of other small business owners. So we do run things like Facebook ads, and we do share content out there, but it's all in the service of bringing people in and in delivering on that promise. So. Um, I'd like to go back to your question about, um, or the previous question about programmatic way to welcome people. Yeah. It seems to me that responding in person is delightful, but completely unscalable. I can have anywhere between two and a thousand people in a week yep, wanting to join, <laughs> and so there, there's just no way I can find five to twenty minutes to handhold everybody through the process afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After they come back and message you, yeah. you're like, hey, hi, nice to meet you. Um, okay, so I'm going to tell you right now, I have templated answers. Like, I, I mean, I'm welcoming hundreds of people a day. I'd say a percentage will write back. The other ones will simply come back and then start interacting with the platform in various places, but the ones who do message me, I have templated responses. Like, I'm gonna not lie to you. Like, I've, I've got a, hey, yes, it's great to meet you, fill in the name, like, so I'm copying and pasting through like my message, my messaging inbox within my MyEagle network. Um, I also have templated messages if somebody wants to know like, hey, how do I find my way around here? I point them to our welcome post that has a video and tells them exactly what to do. So. I've learned that there are ways to make it faster, um, but I think that initial hurdle for us was just letting someone know that someone else out there is excited that they joined. <laughs> um, but yes, there is some work on the other end. I do spend a handful of minutes a day responding to everybody. Other questions? Going? Going? Yes. Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> oh, it's not really a question. I was just going to say, since it seems like we have time and there are any questions, can you show examples? You talked about that. About how live, live demo? Yeah. Yes. How do I do that? 
Uh, Ooh, let's see. Awesome. So I had, I have to say, like a lot of the screenshots here can double as a live demo. But is there anything in particular that, Just, I mean, I mean, I, I'm interested to see what it looks like uh, from a user perspective. Can you yeah. Log in as a group or something? Okay, so here's an example of a landing page. I've been talking a lot about Own It. It's where I spend a lot of my time. I'm the primary uh, community host in that network. Um, but this is, again, our network for small business owners, self-employed professionals. We have a nice little landing page that everybody gets. Let's see if I can figure out how to scroll. Landing page also has more information, prompts to join, text me the app. So this is another way if somebody comes on the web, we're immediately getting them in on the app um, so that they don't uh, so that they're kind of automatically built into this notification piece. But I will just, I'm going to drop in here, rather than doing the sign up flow, it's pretty simple, we've got like email, Facebook, login, um, I'll just drop in here to the signed out view on the web. Um, super hot on the mobile apps though, I'm going to keep saying that. Um, <laughs> but, and also our mobile, our web is completely mobile responsive as well, so there's a really great experience on a phone if you don't have the app. Um, but you can see here we've got like featured posts. I can see who's online, so I can actually see immediately here um, some of the folks who are online right now. Oh, can you keep me using the mic? Just so that you know oh, yeah, what you're doing. While I crouch Thanks. so elegantly. Okay, um, so I can see who's online. Super fun. Uh, I can also, we, we've kind of got a, a featured section post, or featured post section, I'm sorry. Um, so here are some of the posts that I as a host have highlighted as some of the conversations that our members are having right now that are, that are most interesting. You can see here, profile story, question, great question, what's more effective, SEO, social media. Um, as I scroll down here through the feed, I can see that here's a poll that actually one of our members created. So um, I'm not logged in right now, but if I was to try and answer this, it would prompt me to join because any action I take, I need to be a member. Oops, oh, what did I do? Oh, just, just, just like so. Ah, so here's a poll of number created. There's another poll that one of our hosts created recently. I think cash flow must be a theme today because they're like pulling up these older posts. Uh, our, also something I should actually backtrack. So we have a main feed here. What makes it different from uh, any other feed and what really helps it scale is that it's personalized. So I'm not signed in right now. I don't have an account, but if I was signed in, while, I'm, while, I'm, while I join, I'm prompted to share where I am, who I am, so what my profession is, how I identify, and then also I'm prompted to follow the topics that I care about. So once we gather that information from you in a very like quick onboarding process, we can now show you a feed that's personalized based on the topics you care about, the topics you follow. Um, we'll show you the people near you, so you'll see sections kind of like I had in my talk, where you'll automatically see people who are also in San Francisco or also wherever you are. Um, and then we'll also show you people with the same profession or identity. So um, on the platform, we give every host an opportunity to set up what we call like member segments or like categories. So I can be like, in my network, I want people to identify based on their profession, like here. Or I can say I want people to identify based on I don't know, I'm blanking, you have like 20 options, but <laughs> identity, uh, specialty, um, like child's age, I'm trying to think of all sorts of things. So you can, you can kind of pick how you want your members to identify, uh, role, title, all that stuff. Oops, I don't know how to use this scrolly bar, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so here are some questions. We've got another question from a member in the topic called goal setting. Um, got eight comments already. That one just happened earlier today, I remember. So here's also, we'll, we'll surface popular posts though as well. So if I'm not following a topic or I haven't contributed to something yet, but it's, it's gaining momentum, lots of people are answering that poll, lots of people are commenting on that question, we're gonna, we're gonna bubble that up in the feed and show you the popular stuff. Keep doing this. All right, also a great question. Um, I think I actually should comment on this one because I have a lot of experience with WordPress. Cool stuff. People are already contributing here. You can see they've got lots of different comments that I can expand here, but I can also expand and view everything in a you know kind of a post detail page as well. So I can I can I can do that. This is this is an event that I actually just set up. You can see me. I set this up on Monday. This is a live chat Q and A we're having with this lovely woman, Julie Gordon White. She's going to join us um, on March 9th and have a Q and A session about taking your business to the next level and getting funding. 
she's awesome. So you can see here, people can RSVP. Um, so we've got an event platform in it? Yep. Cool. Yeah, so you can have local events, live chats, video hangouts, whatever you want, export to calendar, RSVP, and commenting as well, so you can see who's coming. And then I, as the host, I also have the opportunity to message everybody. So if I want to send everybody who's attending a message, I can do that quickly as well. I have a question, yeah. um, which is, is there some sort of um, OC Tribe discount that you could give us guys who are here and watching online for a, a, like some kind of 10% off-ish kind of Ooh, thing? Oh, that's a really good question. We family. don't have discounts, but I'd say <laughs> talk to us. That's okay. kind of how we work right now. <laughs> we have, um, we have uh, several, like, uh, sort of plans, essentially. They're incredibly affordable. They're very, it's like $50 a month, $100 a month, right? Um, and that just gives you extra features like advanced analytics, download your member list, domain mapping, all that good stuff. Um, the, the big jump is with what we call our professional plan, which is where you get your own branded app. So um, that does compete with custom development because a lot of people come to us and they're like, I want to develop an app. And they've been quoted $200,000 to do that. <laughs> So we have um, a much less expensive, but still um, val like, there's value there in having your own app, but we do all the development. We update every two weeks across the App Store and the Google Play Store. So branded apps right now are, um, depends. We have many different customers, but right now, uh, $3,000 a month uh, with a minimum three, three month commitment. So yes, it's a lot. I mean, if you're gonna do that, you're gonna do it long term. You're gonna get your own app. Not yet, but we hopefully will in the future. And uh, what I didn't mention is that we're actually doing a, some, we're working on some really cool stuff. So in about a month, you'll see a new face of Mighty Bell out there. So, so I have a question yes. to you about the, um, the demo you're showing. Yeah. How, I love it. Um, and I love how it's so feed-based. There's the a lot same, more than that. At the same time, I'm wondering if, as a community manager, if you want to present it in different ways, such as right. maybe more of a brand structure or highlighting the topics that people are right. contributing to, so, what, what options? Are. Yeah, there's a drill down for everything here. So the feed is sort of the main place to start. When you log in, you're going to see what's new, what's related to the stuff that you're interested in or who you're following. So I can also follow people so I can see what they do in my feed or get notified when they add something. Um, I opened up search here, which is one way you can do drill down. It's sort of our discovery area. Um, so you can see some of those featured posts again, as well as some people. Um, I would see a lot more if I was logged in. I'd see the people who are near me. I'd see the people who also have the same profession. Uh, but there's also a way here to drill down. Let me get the dashboard. So I can drill down and just see polls, questions. I can see topics, and I can also break down members. So um, I can see here what all the topics are in this community, which as a host, you know, you're setting up all this yourself. It's sort of like a blank canvas where you fill in the pieces, you customize where you want things to go in search and discovery. Um, you customize how you want your members to identify if you want to even use that feature. Um, here's where I can also see um, members who are near me, our top members, the newest members who joined, just see the hosts, all of that, see who's online now. The other thing that I didn't mention, um, just because it relates more to growth, but we, um, last year, we were really inspired by the skim. I don't know if you're familiar with the skim, but they did this amazing thing where a huge percentage of their users were just grown through their ambassador program and through referrals. So uh, we kind of were inspired by that and we built the whole thing into, into Mighty Bell. So you can turn on an ambassador program and just instantly let members refer others and they can get rewards or you know whatever you want. You can have reward levels. They, they have their own link that they can share out and they get credit and they can kind of climb the ranks. Thank you so yes. much. What a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right on time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you online, and thank you, Audra. And this is incredibly cool.